right here. Is that Peter? Yes. Peter Schiff. That mic is not on. Oh. Maybe that's better. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to... I'm going to get Peter, Peter, Peter. But anyway, uh, I said the, the, yeah, Peter last it's round an honor to ask a question to the back. last competent person to chair the Federal Reserve. But here's my question, and it's a very simple one. You, you mentioned in your, in, your, in your speech that you thought one of the biggest problems we have as a nation, and I agree with you, is that we borrow too much and we spend too much. Yet then you went on to praise Congress and the Fed for the stimulus when the specific goal of the stimulus is to get us to borrow and spend even more. So if the problem is too much borrowing and spending, how is the solution that we borrow and spend even more? Thank you. Well, sometimes, uh, I don't know, there's a word for this, but I can't remember it, a complicated medical word. Sometimes you have to take a little medicine of the disease that killed you to make the medicine better. And in a sense, it's kind of a buying of time. The problem's Peter. worse. If we, if we go well, deeper into debt... Peter, I appreciate it, but I need to let him right. answer the question, and I appreciate you ask it, but we've got to continue to move. We hope it doesn't make it worse. could make it worse, prolong too long, but time being, you needed some band-aid for the economy, and I think a reasonable judgment was it would be worse without it, and even harder to recover from. Well, let me push a little bit on this issue, not necessarily on the debt. Another analogy is used, you know, if you're skidding, you turn into the skid and then you turn away. I mean, that's one of the analogies people often use. But after the 97-98 East Asian economic crisis, I remember Larry Summers at the time, who was then Deputy Secretary, essentially worried that global growth would plummet, that you'd have a global depression, and so the deal was the U.S. economy had to keep chugging away and keep the rest of the world moving. And, and, and thus the era of very low interest rates was not to keep America going, but to keep the rest of the world uh, uh, moving. And then the question is, when you create that climate, which Alan Greenspan and others were, were part of, have you created a new set of vested interests that are very hard to turn out of that skin? And that's maybe a different way of asking Peter Schiff's question. But are we in a, in a system where we've become addicted to a narcotic of cheap rates that is fundamentally creating a different set of incentives and disincentives that's fundamentally unhealthy in the economy. Well, I don't think, you know, having interest rates where they are is a symptom of something to matter. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a normal uh, economic situation. It reflects the, uh, the difficulties that we've had. And it's an extreme shock to the economy, which comes along, fortunately, pretty rarely. But we've had <coughs> it. Now, let me go back to the Asian crisis. I, I was not in office, all I was doing is observing these things, although in fact I was uh, a little bit involved in some of the Asian countries at the time who were trying to adjust. But I'll give you a reading which Larry would probably disagree with, but we've been through the Mexican crisis. We put a lot of money into Mexico to kind of ride out that That crisis. was the Exchange Stabilization Fund. Yeah, right. I mean, in amounts yeah. that I, I used to run the Exchange Stabilization Fund, I never thought it had that kind of money, but they, somehow they <laughs> developed it out of thin air. Uh, and in a sense, it was successful. I, Mexico had a good recovery, but there's a lot of political criticism of the amount of money involved and why do we have to get so deeply involved. And a little while later, the Asian crisis comes along. And as I observed it, the first reaction of the United States government was to stay away. And they said, look, this is an Asian problem. We don't want to get involved in every crisis, every place in the world. So Thailand's a small company, country, and that's all right. And it doesn't, we don't need to jump in. And then it got to Indonesia. Indonesia's a much bigger country. Uh, IMF got involved, but not as actively as it might have. Uh, didn't like the Japanese getting involved because that's our business to get involved. And then it got pretty bad. And then, the next, then it went to Korea. Now we got a bigger country. Korea got in trouble. And so, aha, that was going too far. So we jumped in and helped marshal the banks together to support Korea and and ameliorate the crisis. Uh, but indeed, that was a good example of a relatively small country getting in trouble. But that country getting in trouble 
very sharp fluctuation in this exchange rate, its neighbors got in trouble. Because that happened to Thailand, why can't it happen to Indonesia, the big country? Why can't it happen to Malaysia? Well, Malaysia put on a lot of controls. But finally, what happened to Korea? And at the end of the day, it was felt necessary, quite correctly, mm. to say the United States better become more active in this deal and move to stabilize the situation. Now you can say, oh, what so what? So suppose uh, Korea at worst went into default, so what? Well, if the Korea went into default, you know what other countries would have? It's a, you know, it's, these judgments are not easy, but I don't question at all what, uh, if I question anything about what happened then, maybe they should have gone in earlier. Mm -hmm.